Okay. So to kick off volume two, we are going to now take it one step further and build a more complex shading device on top of all of these windows. And here I've done a very crude sketch of what it is that we're going to try to do. So on the inner rectangle, we want to build this triangular shading device off of just two edges. Um, so to do that, the basic logic is we want to begin by finding these two uh, corner points. We want to then create a line between them identify some point, this can all be parametric, some point along the line to draw the shade uh, uh, hinge point. And then once we have this point located, we can offset it from the facade and then create solid surfaces between these points that we've generated. So if we take a step back and say, okay, how would I go about doing this? Up to now, we've been using lists of information. So if I wanted to build this shading device, say on one of my panels here, and, and, and not use a data tree, which is what we're about to get into. If I just wanted to do this, I'd need to identify these two points. So let's give that a shot. If I wanted to f get this, I might say explode my uh, rectangle curves. And this splits it out into segments and vertices. Now, ignore this for a second. We're going to get into what I just did. But let's assume that we had a single long list of points. So if we didn't have data trees, that's all we would have. And you'll see if I scroll down here, this is what we were using before. Single long flattened list. And if I wanted to, say, grab two of those, use the commands we used before, list item, that's item one. Let's build a little slider so that I can explore which points I have. There we go. I see item one is that lower corner that I want and then item three is this one. And I could pull those two items out. In this case, I know it's item one and three. Let's remove this. And if I were to create a line between those two, you can get these numbers by zooming in. I said number one and three. There I have a line. And let's imagine that I continue through and I build out that whole shading device. If I wanted to do it on the next panel, this right now only builds it from these two points. So I want to do it for those two points. And I would have to can use the same structure, in fact. And by changing this index, I might be able to grab not item 0, but um, a different item. So if I begin at item 4 or 5, this just changes which one I'm, I'm choosing. So from that big long list of points, I'm now uh, pulling out this point and this point. And I would then have to repeat the entire bit of code. And, you'll start, and let's say if I were to do it one more time, I might have to copy this down and do the exact same thing to get up to the next spot. There we go. Notice how repetitive this is. And very quickly what you'll find is that we have nested logic in our parametric models, which means that I can develop one bit of script rather than copying this every single time. What I really want to do is have the logic for one single panel. And because it's parametric, no matter what this inner rectangle is or which panel it's a part of, I want it to follow the exact same code. So rather than repeating this over and over and over again to do the same script each time, I can now leverage data trees in order to write the code once and to repeat that bit of code uh, and pipe in a new uh, bit of information each time to be able to reuse the code. That is what data trees are fundamentally. It's the ability for you to structure your data properly so that you can uh, leverage parametric logic and repeat it throughout your project. So let's take a look at tree structures. I'm now going to, to delete this. Just wanted to show how, without data trees, you, you would have to do this all manually. So now let's look at how we can do this leveraging data trees. 